Hi, this is John with Fix It Planet. This is a uh, really a sort of second of two videos for this PlayStation 4. This is the CUH 1001A. We did uh, this video separately from another video that I show the process of disassembling and reassembling it as well as cleaning and replacing the CPU thermal paste and that sort of thing. I'll leave a link in the description down below for that video if you'd like to see how that's done. This video is just going to concentrate on removing and replacing this HDMI port. So this board's pretty thick and has a pretty high thermal mass. So we've cranked the uh, airflow on the hot air station up pretty high. Temperature set, I think, at 400 degrees. I forget the diameter of the nozzle. It's fairly small for this to for this sort of thing, but it it'll do the job. I just want to get that one out of here. Once again, I just want to apologize for any audio problems or any sort of glitches in the audio or the video. This computer has just about had it. It's time to start looking to get a new one. I need a new video card at the very least. I mean, I don't know. This, this computer is just... I think I'm, I'm going to need to get a new one. Due to the thickness of the board and the high thermal mass as well, that's going to make it a little bit difficult to remove all the solder from inside each one of these uh, post holes where the anchors are going to go. And you can kind of see that uh, the first one on the top right there came out fairly well, so the thermal mass on that particular hole is, is lower than these two down here at the bottom that we're working on now. And I'm trying to use a, a fairly large tip to increase my th heat transfer. And so I can't really get it down in those holes. So we're just going to flip the board over and we're going to pull the rest pull out as much of that as we can. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're just unable to get all of it out, you could take the new port that you're going to put on there and get it seated where it goes and you could heat that up and you should be able to get those legs to melt that solder and go on down in the holes so 
it's not absolutely critical that you get every last little drop of it out of those holes. It just makes it a lot easier to put the port in. The field of view in this uh, particular case is, is not, not very uh, large and we're um, struggling to keep the entire view um, working area in the in the field of view so from time to time I may get a little bit off off out of frame so I apologize for that We've got most of the solder out of these. We've got all of it out just about, except for that last one there. We could go ahead and and just lower the new one down in there and heat it up, heat up the leg. But I'm gonna I'm gonna fuss around a little bit with it and try to get as, get more out of there if I can. I uh, just don't feel like changing the tip. Okay, that'll do. There's a little bit still left in there, but it will be fine. And there's not enough to prevent us. We can just shove it down in there. So the first thing we want to make sure is that each one of these pins is actually lining up with each pad. And one thing that we forgot to do here is to tin those pads. We never even went in and tinned the pads. I just stuck that sucker straight on down there. So that's going to change the way we do this a little bit. Not really a whole lot, but ordinarily I would, I would go ahead and tin those pads ahead of time. So when I tin the pads, basically that just means that I'm going to put a little bit of solder on each one of those pads before I put this port on. So... I really recommend that you do that prior to putting the new port on, but it isn't the end of the world if you if you fail to do it or forget to do it. Now this process actually works with pretty much any of the PlayStations. And there's a lot of videos out there already that, that cover this topic. But we don't have anything like this on our channel and I just really felt compelled to do it on camera. Because we do this sort of thing quite a bit and I just never have done a video because there's so many other videos out there on it. I just thought this time I would do one for our own channel. maybe we'll cover something that somebody else didn't. Uh, one of the things I notice is that nobody seems to ever show how to take it apart or put it back together. So there are some videos out there that, that somewhat cover that. But a lot of them just show you how to take it apart. And then they just tell you to reverse the process. We're going to do it from start to finish. Taking it apart, putting it back together. We're going to clean it out. We're going to change the thermal paste. So hopefully, maybe that'll be useful to somebody out there. Now we've basically just flooded these pins with solder. Since I didn't uh, tin the pads, I just want to put a decent amount of solder in there. And uh, we'll end up having to clear a bunch of bridges. Uh, these bridges are going to be areas where the solder is touching between pins. And 
now our flux is starting to get all dirty and brown can't really see what we're doing it makes it hard to see on the video so we're going to clean all that mess up take a closer look at what, what's going on So we still have quite a few pins that are bridged together, a whole bunch down here at the, towards the bottom. We'll get all that cleaned up. I'm going to take this razor knife and I'm going to go between each one of these pins and clean out any of that flux that got really hard. That way I can see a little bit better. Since we've got quite a bit of flux down here towards the bottom, I just use a little bit of that uh, solder wick to suck some of that excessive amount of solder off of those pins. take a closer look see what else needs to be done so it looks like that center pin is still not soldered all the other ones look pretty good I'm gonna double check the one down towards the end there as well I think it's actually soldered but we'll probably add a little bit to it the one in the center though that one definitely looks like it hasn't got any solder on it How did we miss that? One of these things does not look like the other. So I'm just going to check each one of these pens with the tip of this exact enough and you can see that one's moving the others aren't moving that's the one I was curious about it seems pretty solid but that's the one right there we need to we need to get that one so you can see we've bridged it again one of the things you're going to do if you bridge anything like that is I'm just going to put the tip up right against the, the front of the pen there and the actual pad itself. So I'm touching both at the same time and I'm allowing the heat to sort of draw towards the tip of the iron and pulling away. Basically the solder will follow the heat. There, that one's nice and clear now. Very good. So we should have more than enough solder on that pin in the center that we were looking at earlier. Let's zoom in and get a closer look. So you can see the solder is sort of sloping down. Let's turn it around and get a better look. You can see how shiny the tips are on the front edge of the pins. 
and that the solder is sort of sloping down on the front edge from the pin itself to the pad. And that's good. Let's put it on the bench and give it a test and see if it actually works. We're looking at the big screen. Good, so we have sound and video coming from our, MH, our HDMI cable. We're going to go ahead and connect up a controller, pop a disc in and make sure it reads. Everything looks good. Again, the teardown and reassemble of this exact same machine is in another video. I'll put in the, a link in the description down below if you'd like to see that, how that's done. If you found this video interesting, please like, share, and subscribe, and okay. we'll see you next time. Bye-bye now. Yeah, just